This is another presentation by My Weight World. Appetite, it's more than just hunger. Our body sends us many signals every day. Thirst, fatigue, pain, and many others. However, one of the most confusing signals because of the many variables is that of hunger. The goal of this presentation is to help you tell the difference between actual hunger and perceived hunger or appetite. This presentation will also provide you with ideas about managing the desire to eat when your body may not actually need food. And we will also provide ideas for healthy foods that can help you manage your appetite and control your hunger to make weight control easier. First, let's consider the definition of hunger. Hunger is an actual physical, not emotional craving for food. Signs of true hunger include sensations of discomfort in the stomach, agitation or shakiness, as well as irritability. Hunger is something that you really don't have control over. This is the way your body responds to lack of nourishment. Let's consider the definition of appetite. Appetite is the desire to eat as well, but this is influenced by what is happening outside of the body rather than a physical lack of nutrition. Factors that can affect appetite include sights, such as those brilliant TV commercials, smells, taste, social factors, stress, and emotions. How can we tell the difference between hunger and appetite? It is often difficult we can easily become accustomed to eating at certain times, in certain places, and with certain people. Our mind can become conditioned to expect food for other reasons than hunger, and it is also important to know that medical and health factors can also influence hunger and appetite. Health and medical influences on appetite are important to be aware of. Diabetes, especially if undiagnosed or uncontrolled, can often greatly increase feelings of hunger because of unhealthy changes in metabolism. At the same time, poorly controlled diabetes can also cause physical changes that result in nausea and poor appetite. Digestive diseases as well as heart, kidney, and respiratory diseases can also play a large role in feelings of hunger. So if you are suspecting that you have any related conditions or are being treated for any of them, be sure to discuss changes in appetite with your physician. Also medications, both prescription and over-the-counter, can also affect appetite and the way your body uses nutrients. To manage appetite for weight control, it is important to learn to tell the difference between hunger and appetite. You can learn to use your appetite stimulus to control your hunger by evaluating external influences. Consider what foods you were eating when you are hungry. These choices can make a real difference. And think about if you are allowing yourself to become overly hungry in between meals. One helpful way to find out if you are experiencing real physical hunger or an externally stimulated appetite is to ask yourself, what do I want this food to do for me? Are you eating to satisfy hunger, distract yourself from chores, provide entertainment, help you feel better, relieve stress, or keep you company? If you are eating for true hunger, don't be afraid or guilty about enjoying your food. Consider whether you need a full meal or just a snack. Are you excessively hungry so that it is difficult to control portions or amount of servings taken? Will the foods you eat satisfy your hunger, not just immediately, but for the next few hours? If you are eating because of hunger, choose foods that satisfy but do not exceed your hunger. This may take practice. Choose foods that provide nutrients to keep you well-fueled and healthy. Learn to make the distinction between hunger that is satisfied or comfortable and oversatisfied, such as uncomfortable or stuffed. 
And to help you with this, wear a belt or close that button or zip. When you are finding yourself wanting to eat but not hungry, consider trying these techniques. Write down a list of why you may want to eat. To avoid chores or work, remember it will still be there afterwards. Do you need to be entertained? Consider reading a good book or become involved in a non-food related hobby, but don't eat at the same time. If you are eating and not really hungry, is it to make yourself feel better? Find out what is making you feel bad or depressed and what can be done. You may want to consider assistance from a qualified therapist. Eating to relieve stress? Try exercise, listening to relaxing music, or deep breathing. Remember, overeating just adds to more stress and guilt. If you are eating and not actually hungry, could this be due to loneliness? No diet in the world can correct this. Many people eat simply because food is comforting, doesn't talk back, and is dependable. Consider if this is your relationship with food and what might be a healthier alternative, such as joining a hobby group or doing volunteer work. Remember, if you are in fact frequently hungry, make sure you know if there are physical reasons why this is so. Excessive hunger and thirst may very well be related to diabetes, medications, and other medical conditions. Be sure to take time to discuss this with your physician. Food cravings are commonly reported as a challenging issue in controlling weight. Here are some tips to help you manage and potentially eliminate them. First, eat regularly scheduled and balanced meals. Skipping meals will increase the chances of cravings and overeating. Also, evaluate your mood or situation. Do you eat certain foods because of certain emotions? Don't berate yourself over a mistake in food choices. Many people think if they have had one serving of a bad food, they might as well forget about eating better the rest of the day. In learning to manage cravings, don't label foods as bad or forbidden. The food is not the problem, it's the quantity consumed and why or how it is eaten. Avoid abstinence. Strictly avoiding certain foods prevents you from learning how to manage and moderate your eating of any food. Remember, you do have the power. Another craving control technique is to distract yourself. Avoid saying, I can't or won't have that. Try doing something non-food related for 10 or more minutes before eating a tempting food. Consider cleaning your closet. You may find that the craving will pass. And of course, exercise. It's difficult to eat while moving, and exercise will help you manage emotions that lead to eating. Some nutrition ideas for cravings. If you are craving sugary and sweet foods, Try eating fresh fruit in season, frozen fruit popsicles, or even a small bowl of oatmeal topped with some honey or brown sugar and cinnamon. If you are craving salty foods, try some single serving low fat popcorn, edamame beans with a little salt, or even a small bowl of vegetable or bean soup, which really can take the edge off of cravings and appetite. If you are craving fatty foods, such as french fries or pastries, have lean proteins such as fish or chicken, along with a fruit, vegetable, and a whole grain at each meal and snack. Some examples include a boiled egg and sliced apples, string cheese and a few rye crackers and baby carrots, and hummus dip. And don't forget to keep well hydrated with plenty of water. People often confuse hunger with thirst. A few other little things that affect our appetite that might not be so apparent. When driving, do you pass by the same drive through restaurant every day and are in the habit of stopping for food? This is a powerfully strong habit. 
So consider taking a different route, even if it is a little longer. This might save you hundreds of calories per day, as well as dollars per year. Don't satisfy your true physical hunger with sweets and treats. This will easily condition you to believe that only these treats will satisfy your hunger. Have some nutritious food first, and then a small portion of a sweet or treat if you still desire it. Here are some meal ideas for appetite control. These foods are good sources of protein as well as complex carbohydrates, meaning that they will keep you full and your blood sugar stable, which are important factors in controlling hunger and appetite. Try eggs with whole wheat or rye toast and fresh fruit or oatmeal or other whole grain cereal with low fat milk and a small amount, about a quarter cup, of chopped nuts. Peanut butter wrapped in a whole wheat tortilla with banana slices makes a very quick and satisfying meal on the go, which will keep your appetite stable for hours. Some quick, easy, and filling lunch ideas can include an almond butter and honey sandwich on whole wheat bread with a piece of fresh fruit, a low-fat cheese quesadilla with a side of carrots and celery, or a chicken or turkey sandwich on rye bread with a side of three bean salad. Again, these are just a few examples of filling and nutritious meals that can go a long way in helping you to control your weight. For dinner meals that can help prevent the late night munchies, try a few slices of thin crust pizza with a large mixed green salad topped with an olive oil and vinegar dressing or some grilled fish with brown rice or a baked potato, steamed fresh or frozen vegetables, and some fruit sorbet for dessert. Making a small serving of dessert a planned part of your meal is very important to helping to take the emotion out of the food. Just remember these important diet and appetite controlling downfalls. Eating in your car, finishing your kids' meals, tasting food to an excess while cooking, snacking on leftovers while cleaning up, and even eating right out of the refrigerator. Be very aware and avoid these habits at all costs. In summary, it's not only what you eat, but it's also how you eat. Be aware of the role of emotions and habits that affect your eating. Have appetite controlling alternatives and strategies available to you and find out if your diet is actually helping you to manage your appetite for long-lasting weight control and good health. This has been another presentation by My Weight World.